and that's when you realize you know when you dig in deep and you try to paint what's inside it's the toughest thing and i guess the only thing that got the three of them here was nothing but insane hard work insane dedication to anything we worked with every part of our life is bollywood is the biggest film industry of the world making the maximum number of films yeah. impacting every aspect of a life a wedding has to look like bollywood our clothes have to look like bollywoods our physique has to look like bollywood artificial intelligence machine learning suddenly everybody wants to get an answer from chat gpt everybody wants an ai tool which will do things in minutes we are all scared of changing we are yeah. all scared because we don't know or i don't know because the future is going to get even more complex going ahead and learning something new almost every day so brand life a brand's life cycle has wow. reduced okay. so i am using and disposing brands so humans today are living longer than brands you know mm. there should be no sports days where you're giving first second third is the most demoralizing thing yeah. for so many of the children Have you ever wondered individuals like Amitabh Bachchan, Shah Rukh Khan and Sachin Tendulkar have a hand or a touch of gold? Whatever they touch, it turns into gold. Then you are here in for a treat. My next guest, Dr. Rajita Chaudhary, has not only learned what they do and how it works for them, but also has some Sorry. very intricate thoughts about why and how are they successful. Dr. Rajita is not only an individual, an expert in marketing and communication, but also is an expert in arts, in cake. and many other skills she is an individual with variety of skills and great thoughts on personal brand building so you are in for a treat today because she is a person with variety of skills so without much further ado let me get on with it hi rajita welcome to masters decoded season 3 podcast really glad to have you on the show today hi anis thank you so much and it's an absolute delight to be in conversation with you and on this show thank you so much No, uh, and it's been an absolute honor to have you. Also, uh, I have done a little bit digging on you from a LinkedIn profile uh, and all of that. But something which caught my attention today, uh, when we got started, is something behind you uh, right now on the video. Right? Is that yes. art? Now, yes. is that self or is it somebody else's? No, no, it is somebody else. Okay. It's just uh, in my imagination. It's um, you know that's how I paint. Okay. You just think of a concept and then you start working, and from what you think to what you make, there's a huge difference. Agreed. But uh, that's how I think all creative processes are, and uh, painting has been like very close to my heart since I was a child. You know, it started as my mom sending me to a neighbor's painting class. A little okay. Didi used to take a class, just so that you know she could get an afternoon nap in the summer holidays. <laughs> all and of our parents did that, right? I assume. All of our parents did that, and it somehow stuck with me. And all through my life, you know, um, I have had like uh, you know various uh, ups, downs. The one thing that's remained constant has been art. I've gone back to art. uh to clear my mind to get creative ideas or you know sometimes just to enjoy because there's a point when you become just one with the canvas yes. you, know, you 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 become uh, oblivious of everything around you it's just you and that painting and i guess it's for that feeling that i go back to the cam- uh, canvas again and again and uh, create whatever's in my mind whatever are my thoughts at that point of time no uh um... I experienced the magic of canvas uh, recently I would say about 2 months ago uh, we had our company's offsite and uh, one of the activity as part of that offsite was uh, you know we had a professional trainer who could train us on how to paint uh, wow. and uh, you know as children like you said we've all been through our own painting classes and all of that but the understanding of how you can play with colors how can you make contrast with colors to kind of give that depth of feel and bring that 3d image and uh the funny story is you know the lady who was teaching us she drew something pretty quickly and she said hey mimic or imitate what we uh, what she was doing 
but each one of us built our own and like you said right what you think uh, when you started off you just said that what you think and what you end up doing is completely different uh, and it becomes your own it becomes your own piece of art right uh, yes and i was uh, traveling internationally it, it was a huge canvas and i ensured it became so close to me uh, like you said it i be, it became me it's mine now that i ensure that i protect it and i bring it back home with me and i've done that uh, so it, you know i have got a line to painting again in fact my painting style is finger painting uh, actually using yeah. fingers not uh, using uh, brushes or anything yeah. Yes. Uh, so yeah you know it's it's an art form which is is really enriching for all of us and, and i can appreciate that yes you know experimenting on canvas is very much similar to experimenting with life you know yeah you have to really be bold and you have to be uh, daring to do something different you know my journey started by painting rather copying renaissance paintings okay and then my son you know who was at that time about 12 you know okay. he i showed him the painting and you know everybody in my family was really appreciative you know wow it's exact like the renaissance and you know it's the exact wow. copy so he says mama it's good but where are you in this painting wow. and a 12 year old said that to you a 12 year old you know my son is i think uh, way more evolved than <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> many of us and sometimes so, children hit you with this hard questions right like yes. they shake you up it shook me up and i was glowing with pride that i had copied it exactly and here was this child telling me but where are you why don't you paint what comes from within and i guess that transformed my whole journey completely so um so and that's when you realize you know when you dig in deep and you try to paint what's inside it's the toughest thing yeah so copying is easy you know finding a beautiful picture replicating it easy but bringing out something with them so i'm really attracted to uh, you know the modern art the um, what you call the abstract art uh, it um, it's different you know it's it's the artist's deepest hidden feelings which resonate with you and yeah. that's when you like that painting so yeah and i think in life too you know if you have the guts to do something original yeah um that's when you really stand out it's tough but it's rewarding yeah So, Rajita, you are a person of variety of, uh, I would say, interest, and you've done many things. Uh, yeah. So, for the benefit of the audience, would you want to introduce yourself, like how you introduce yourself to everyone? Like, what do you do today? Oh my God! Today, as of today, um, see, my my favorite introduction is that I have the happiest role I've played. is that of a mother and i guess every mother will tell you that yes because i guess it's one of the most uh, difficult and most rewarding hmm. and uh, when you see your child and you know you 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 remember the journey i guess it changed me as a person just bringing up another human being hmm. so i guess that's one of the positions i'm most proud of uh, as of now i have gone into a very creative uh, kind of uh, journey I don't just paint. I also bake cakes and paint on cakes. Wow! So you can give me a Renaissance painting, which I can paint for you on a canvas and a cake. I can paint your face on a canvas and a cake. So that's a new venture again. I'm trying to uh, make it bigger, calling it uh, uh, cake and canvas. Okay. Uh, apart from that, I have been in the profession of teaching for more than two decades now. Yep. Uh, teaching. Um, various forms of communication be it business communication or marketing communication or branding advertising uh, so that's something i have enjoyed i enjoyed studying while doing my mba uh, as a student and i enjoyed teaching it and that's what my books are also all about they're all yeah. about branding uh, so i have written bollywood power brands which is the power of branding yeah. in india's biggest brand you know i guess the only biggest brand known world over is bollywood Mhm. I've written Thorns to Competition which is a guide to uh how to you know face the marketing world and the marketing challenges. I've written a book Win Right very recently which is more on today's world on how mm -hmm. um 
the concept of winning has changed and it has evolved and become something completely different. So I paint, I teach, I write. I guess that's basically all that I do. I completed my too. PhD. And you bake too. Sorry? And you bake too. I bake too, yes. You yes. know, and that also started, you know, with the, um, you know, uh, the children's birthdays and everything, you know, they wanted something yeah. different, which was not available in the market. So my uh, nephew comes and says, I want a Spider-Man jumping from a building. Can you make a cake like that? Hmm. So, you know, you then try and do everything and that's how it evolved. And I really enjoyed that. Yeah. So uh, let's see, maybe next podcast could be on cakes and canvas. Sure. Definitely. So you, sorry, you said you did your PhD and I interrupted you at that time. So your PhD, yeah, did my your PhD thesis also is also in the field of communication. So this was on culture. Uh, it was uh, uh, on uh, how India is not one country. And as marketers and brand builders, you need to remember um, North, South, East, West center. You know, you have the same brand. You have to talk differently to different people. Yeah. So that was the, uh, the, the foundation of the PhD. And uh, so, yeah, so basically I'm a very communications person. Everything is, you know, even even uh, the canvas and the cakes are probably ways of expressing. Nice. So that has, um, that's probably been all through my, uh, my journey, this one aspect. You've given me so many areas now to double it. <laughs> click on, right? I, I don't know. <laughs> to if, grill me on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. We'll not grill you on. But let's talk about... <laughs> And there's something else which kind of caught, uh, if people have not looked you up on LinkedIn, uh, I'm sure it will, uh, uh, people will like, really? And that came out to me as well. And I was like, really? I saw Shah Rukh Khan's picture on LinkedIn, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you've done a book on power of brands. Uh, so, you know, when you talk about Bollywood, right, and you speak about the power of brands and you've got an opportunity to meet some of the greatest, like it shows up from the pictures, definitely. Uh, what compelled you to write about that book? And you said that's one of the biggest brand which is there, which is Bollywood. So why why did that happen? And what compelled you? Um, so fortunately, uh, I got the chance to work with and interact with three of India's biggest brands, yeah. Shah Rukh Khan, Amitabh Bachchan and Sachin Tendulkar. Hmm. And, uh, you know, you realize uh, that, uh, you know, of course, they're great people. But, you know, as a, as a marketing person and as a business person, you look at them and you question what got them here. Yeah. And I guess the only thing that got the three of them here was nothing but insane hard work, insane dedication to anything. We worked with uh, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan on films. Hmm. And believe me, he was the first to come on the set, the one who re rehearsed his lines the maximum. He doesn't need to. Yeah. And the one who was the most sincere and helped everybody around. Uh, Shah Rukh, like, I've not seen a person more intelligent than him. You know, he's a genius. You give him something, in two hours, he has, he has read it, understood it, digested it, questioned you, grilled you. And you're all sorted. In fact, after discussing with him, you're more clear about your project uh, <laughs> than you were earlier. And Sachin, absolutely humble, has his heart in the right place, knows exactly, uh, you know, what he wants to do, what he doesn't want to do. We had a foundation called the Great Indian Dream Foundation, and he uh, helped us uh, to promote it. So when you interact with these and you work so closely with them, you realize they're not just individual, they're brands of their own, you know, yeah. they, they, they stand for something, they stand just like a brand, you know, has a USP. Each of them has a USP. So that made me dwell, delve it a little bit into uh, this whole brand called Bollywood. And, you know, you understand that what Bollywood does today, India does tomorrow. It's something like that. Yes, you know? it is. It definitely Every is. part of our life is... Uh, Bollywood is the biggest film industry of the world, making the maximum number of films, yeah. impacting every aspect of our life. A wedding has to look like Bollywood. Our clothes have to look like Bollywoods. Our physique has to look like Bollywood. If Karina Kapoor goes size zero, every girl goes size zero. Yeah. If Shah Rukh has a six-pack, everybody wants a six-pack. You know... Uh, Mughle Azam, she wore the Anarkali till today the Anarkali suits are there. Hum yeah. aapke hai kaun? Madhuri wore the that dress, that sari. Everybody wanted that sari. Yeah. 
So be it fashion, be it our thoughts, be it the way we speak, you know, we are conversing in Bollywood dialogues. Mm. And, uh, you know, they have become iconic. They've become a part of our lingo. They've become a part of our life. They've become a part of the way we express ourselves. And also, you know, there's this cult following today, you know, whose fan are you? So are you of that person? And that suddenly bonds you. Oh, you're a Shah Rukh Khan fan, me too. And suddenly you're best friends. So uh, I guess uh, the huge impact this particular industry has on us, the way we are fanatic about it, and the fact that it's the biggest brand, you know, in terms of money, in terms of influence, uh, made us write the book, uh, Bollywood Power Brands. We talked of directors, we talked of musicians, we talked of actors, actresses, who over the years have become an industry of their own. Mm-hmm. And the interesting part is these brand builders are also today brand makers. You know, yeah. they are heading so many brands today and um, they have so many of the actresses have their beauty brands. So many of the actors have, uh, you know, their other business Clothing brands. brands. And, yeah, there are so many. Of them. And they have the edge, you know, they have that edge over the other brand builders because yeah. of the fame and the popularity they come with. So it makes a very interesting uh, marketing, communication, life, case study combined, yeah. which is what inspired uh, me to write no, this and book. You, you kind of, when you dissected three of them, right? Amitabh, but Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, Mr. Yes. Shah Rukh Khan and, and Sachin Tendulkar, right? Three of my favorite idols, right? Uh, yes. So when you, you, you said um, Mr. Bachchan is more focused on you know his hard work his persistence at this age at this level of the career mm-hmm. the hard work which is there mr Shah Rukh khan the intelligence which he brings in right uh, oh yes and the third uh, you spoke about sachin which is more about the heart right and when you look he's at the he's a perfect he's such a good human being you know yeah. you 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 see it when you interact with him they are men of few words but yeah. you know each word is measured and it means he speaks what he means and he means what he speaks you know yeah. Um, that's so, what I could you know, The reason why, I, when I now kind of take a step back, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan is like a physiology, it's the hard work. Uh, yes. Shah Rukh Khan is the brain and Sachin is the heart, right? So, what you just brought out, the reason why I'm so excited about that aspect is because when I look at corporates, right, and you, since you are in the space of teaching, right? When you look at modern companies today, uh, they don't work as a human being, right? Like the physiology of the body, the heart and the mind, right? Like what you just dissected, three of them. And there's so much to learn from that aspect for many large corporates to kind of understand, hey, you're building a brand, but you're building a brand which is going to be made of humans and it's going to cater to humans, right? Yes. Uh, it's it's You can build the best tech company of the world, or you can build the best product company of the world, but who's going to buy it? Who's going to be part of that journey? Who's help, going to help you build? It's that human beings, right? Uh, which is the center of everything. Uh, and Bollywood knows how to tickle, like you gave those examples, the human beings, three parts, right? The physiology, the heart, and the mind, which kind of gets them attracted. They become like the magnet to them, right? And it's whether it's you're building your own personal brand or you're building your company's brand, you need to cater to that I, I, do you agree what i just said like absolutely that... absolutely and it's and you it's even more relevant today you know we're entering an age where very soon it'll be machines taking over artificial intelligence yes. and you're you're an expert in that artificial intelligence machine learning suddenly everybody wants to get an answer from chat gpt everybody wants an ai tool which will do things in minutes what i'm what i keep telling my students and my people around me is in this world of artificial intelligence what we are forgetting is we have to first and foremost be human you know machines are being you know nlp in my times used to be neuro linguistic programming (laughs) not natural language understood how your mind functions yeah today nlp is natural language programming where you are teaching the ai to function like a human yeah so in an era where the machine is being taught to become more human We humans are becoming like machines. And it is now that we need to really be more human, think like humans, which is where empathy becomes the most important factor for everybody, for brands, for humans, for everybody, if you want to survive in the future. Yeah. You know, so I guess that's the key. And that's what is missing in most people. 
So when you talk about missing in most people, and since you've had almost two decades of journey of teaching and being in that space, uh, have you seen the new generation and the generations which have been through in the last two decades when they learn branding, when they learn communication, is that changed also? Like, you know, everybody wants to, like you're saying an example about AI. Do you see a change in the way students are today coming out or, you know, I'm sure there are, there are students who listen to this podcast as well. Is you Have you seen that change, a big shift happening in the way students you approach? Know, when, when we, when, we if, when I started, uh, the student in my class was very sure, you know, that I want to, I'm studying this. After this, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to be in this company. I'm going to become the CEO. I'm going to retire. Today's, the student is more, um, I would say, more adventurous. Yeah. Uh, who does not care about a big brand coming. You know, he is ready to take chances. He's ready to um, do things which are, which are, you know, which are not considered, which are not considered normal. I don't know if I should put it as normal or um, <clears throat> I guess they're more uh, open to, uh, to, uh, to different things, you know. Yeah. So today there could be, uh, you know, a brand like a Nike coming in. Mm -hmm. There could be a startup coming in promising, you know, that these are my shoes and they're going to change the world. And you will get people who would probably jump from Nike to this. So people are today more confident of their choices of leaving the traditional ways and approach. This is as far as placements is concerned. As far as learning is concerned, I guess the students are, you know, they're dynamites. They have Google in their hands. Yeah. So you as a teacher, if you are not prepared, you are going to be ripped apart. Yeah. So as a teacher, my first learning is please go very well prepared in the class. And second learning as a teacher is if you don't know, because it's not possible to know everything, every second something is happening, yeah. have the humility to say, I don't know. And the students respect that. Yeah. So I guess as a teacher, that's where I have changed. And as students, I feel they have become, uh, you know, it's a little more challenging to teach them. But it is also extremely exciting because of the new inputs and thoughts you get from them. They are in a generation, you know, where they've grown up with digital. Yeah. Their thought processes are different. Their future planning is different. Their, their outlook towards life is different. So the students have changed. Yes, people have changed a lot. Inside the class. I mean, I have at least. <laughs> no, I can I can attest to it. I have two young boys at home, uh, you know, two handsome young boys. My younger one uh, is, is just 12 uh, and uh, he loves animals. And, you know, his pastime or he, whenever he, he's around phone or he's around his tablets, what he does is he keeps Googling or he keeps looking at YouTube uh, to learn about animals. And uh, this is an interesting story. I've shared this previously as well. Since you're a teacher, you would appreciate. Uh, you know, as children, even as grown up today, I always believed that camel is the sheep of the desert because it can go without water for the longest time and all of yeah. that, right? Yeah. That's what we've all know, right? Yeah. And we've all grown up with that knowledge. Right. Uh, he was asked the same uh, question in the class. And my young one says something else it's a lizard or something it's a mammal and the entire and it's a name even i can't pronounce right to be very candid <laughs> about that animal and he comes up with these funny names right and i'm like what what is that he's like that we play this game starting letter this and ending letter this and it's a 11 letter word or a 20 letter word and i'm like what the hell it is is it an animal <laughs> i've not even heard of it and he knows dinosaurs okay. names and all of that and he says this to the teachers right and there are four teachers who are doing like a quiz competition and they also laugh and the entire students laugh because in every student's mind and teacher's mind, it's a camel. But he doesn't give that answer. Everybody laugh, laugh. Now, as a child, you know, we all have been taught that teachers are always right. They are like the gurus of the world, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's that's done with long time back. <laughs> no, no, but still there are, right? Many people who yes, believe that yes, the yes. gurus are always, you can't question the guru. But my young yeah. one, out of his free will, now, if it was... Previously, he would have shy and he would have sulked, like, I'm right, but everybody's laughing. He stood up, he was standing up and he says, teacher, why don't you just Google and you ask, uh, just, yes. you know, what I've given an answer, just Google. So teachers, 
out of their, not of their free will, they Google. They look at each other because there were four of them and they say, you are right. And he was like beaming with pride and all of that, right? But the point is to your, to, to what he just said is that there's so much of knowledge out there which you are not yeah. aware, right? And as and individuals, we need to be you, you humble and have that humility that, hey, yeah. we may be wrong. Right. You know, when you say I am wrong, you are actually giving a huge lesson, sending a huge message across to the kids in the class that don't be scared to say I am wrong, you know, yeah. or I don't know, because the future is going to get even more complex. Yes. And, you know, your 12 year old, there's a term for this generation. It's called Generation Alpha. Yeah. These yeah. are people born from 2010 till 25. They're born know, with AI, basically, around them. They're, they're born with AI. They're born with iPads, you know. Yeah. So this is the generation that we as marketers, we as teachers need to prepare ourselves for. They have no concern. As I was telling you, they have no concern for brands. They have no concern for loyalty. Their concerns are different, you know. And they're extremely educated. I guess the most intelligent of all the... A set of consumers that we will interact with in the future and they are the ones uh, who will you know really change all the rules of marketing they're teaching they're changing it in the class you yes. know so they are making the teachers say that you know you don't know and accept it yes. and i guess um, yeah the, the world is changing it's going to get very exciting it's going to get very fast yeah but um I, I, I guess we have to be prepared for that. You know, you cannot, uh, what you did yesterday is redundant today. So this Generation Alpha is just teaching us exactly that. Yeah, know? in fact, uh, you know, companies today, I'm sure you talk to a lot of companies as well. They yeah. are, they're talking about generation, this millennials and Gen Zs, and they're scared of them. And, you know, yeah. mobile phone. And this, they are forgetting that this new generation, which is Generation Alpha, right, who's being born yeah. with AI, who's playing with AI yeah. as if it's a toy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, all of them are playing with Alexa and series of the world as if it's no toy. And we've grown up, we've never had those Alexas and series yeah. around us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's going to be different. It's going to be changing, right, uh, yeah. to your yeah. point. But let's... Yes take this to a different level like how do companies because you are an expert in this domain of building brands like you said there's no loyalty today right i'm very yeah. stuff right now uh i don't care about the brands anymore Absolutely. right i care what looks good on me i'm wearing it right now yeah. tomorrow if this t-shirt gets loose i'll throw it out it's not that i will keep it yeah. like as a precious like which we used to right yes, we, yes. our wedding dress we is right two wardrobes. you know we had two wardrobes one Clothes that you wore when guests came or when you had to go outside yeah. and one that you wore at home. Yeah, all that's changed, you know. Yeah. And I guess that's what scares people a lot, Anis, because yeah. we are all scared of changing. We are yeah. all scared because we don't know. And, you know, of course, we will never know. And yeah. now more so because every day something new is happening. So it's 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 reasonable to be, fa uh, to be scared. It's good to be scared because then use that fear to prepare more, to get more knowledge. And I guess that's the only, only way to stay ahead of the race is A, educate yourself and B, don't be scared of hiring people better than you. Yeah. You know, because a lot of us don't do that as leaders. You know, again, we are scared we'll be dominated or we'll be overpowered or overshadowed. Yeah. But that's what you have to do. That's what you have to live with. You have to live with constant change, constantly accepting you don't know people you don't know certain things going ahead and hiring people better than you yep. going ahead and learning something new almost every day um, and you know if you have to connect to these uh, these people then as brand builders i guess you have to just first understand where they live if they live on instagram go and build your brand there yeah. if they have if they're living on youtube go and build your brand there yeah if they are following a particular influencer, that person is called an influencer for a reason. You know, mm -hmm. that person influenced you. So you listen to him. You don't listen to, you know, they will not watch TV, but they will watch uh, YouTube. Uh, they will watch a podcast, listen yeah. to a podcast because somewhere they connect. So yeah. you have to find out who those people are. I guess influencers will become a big, big thing, are already a big, big thing yeah. in building brands of the future. So A, change yourself first um, as an individual 
and B, understand the consumer that is coming in of tomorrow. Yeah. And I guess just match. Uh, the, the old adage remains the same. You, know, you have to give the consumer what he wants. Yes. So that has not changed. That remains the same. But is loyalty dead? L loyalty... Loyalty is dead everywhere, you know, <laughs> in everything. <laughs> Even in relationships nowadays, we find, right? Today, loyalty is dead. Nobody wants to commit. Yes. Nobody has um, the time or the patience to, you know, um, just uh, try and understand things deeper, try and understand humans deeper, try and understand relationships deeper. So, yes, loyalty is, is dead could be a very harsh statement. But what I want to say is, don't be stagnant. Even mm -hmm. as a brand, if you want to remain there, keep evolving, keep changing, keep doing something new constantly. Okay. Keep touching them. You know, even though it's a world of machines, what we are craving for is human interaction. Yeah. What we are craving for is human stories. So if the brand has to really connect. It has to tell good human stories. And that's where you connect with the audience of today. Who though is disconnected, who though isolated, you know, social media has more isolated us than connected us. Yes. But as brands, if you reach out, as we started the podcast, you know, when you said, you know, we have stopped being human. Yep. I guess as brands, you have to today become more human. An advertisement or a branding story which has a human story yeah. is much more effective than a brand which is just gloss and uh, you know, beautiful story. images. Yeah, yeah. So authenticity is what will keep you connected and constantly innovating. It's a tough game, but uh, then that's the game. So, you know, when you talk about loyalty is, is changed, I would not meaning I will correct myself. It's not dead, but it's changing, right? It's still yeah, mo yeah. metamorphing into something we don't know. Uh, you know, the good old practices of CLV, customer lifetime value, which measured the loyalty and all of that. Oh, yes. Those practices are still metamorphizing into many different things today, right? Yes. Uh, but when you look at branding, when you look at loyalty, and then you look at the human aspect, or you look at the authenticity, or bringing that empathy towards your uh, aspect. Now, when you bring this tri-factor piece together, in your point or in your what when you see today, uh, you know brands, and when you see companies who are trying to do their stuff. What is that one tip or one piece like you gave a lot of that being human? Is that the only piece? Because at the end of the day, yaar, unko bechna bhi hai to hai unka product, right? Like in your space, right? If you have to set yeah, your cake, yeah. right? You yeah, have to yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to bring that product out. You can't just be talking about, but you gave a story, okay, like a nephew wanted a Spider-Man cake, right? So, but how do you bring that product also a star, right? In that aspect. See, loyalty is diminishing for sure. And the second, uh, one of the best ways to figure it out is the Forbes or the Fortune 500 lists. Hmm. Back in 1930s, the lifespan of a brand was 90 years. That's hmm. loyalty. Yeah. 1950s, it became 61 years. Today, it's 18 years to 12 years. So a brand life, a brand's life cycle has wow. reduced. Okay. So I am using and disposing brands. So humans today are living longer than brands, you know. Mm. So in my lifetime, I would see a brand come and go. Uh, brands today are being created at the fastest pace, pace ever possible, you know, and almost for free, thanks to the social media, thanks to the internet. Brands are being created, brands are being killed. Yes. So that's the best, that's the best test. That's the best way to prove that there is nothing like loyalty. Either you innovate or you die. And it's you, you will see it in your lifetime. Brands will come and they'll shoot up and then they will just disappear. No, we've seen many of them, unfortunately, yes. right? Unfortunately, I'm using that word, which had a lot of hype, had a lot of promise also. Yeah. Good promise. Uh, yes. They didn't survive yeah. for whatever so you may do. You may do everything right, Anis, and still you may not survive because of something beyond your control. Because, you know, today, um, it used to be profits, which was the bottom line yes. for any brand. Yeah. Today, that's changed. You know, it's, there's the 3P uh, bottom line. Yeah. So it's profit, people and planet. 
यू हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ नॉट जस्ट योर प्रॉफिट दैट्स ऑफ कोर्स बेचना तो है यू हैव टू सेल योर प्रोडक्ट वाई एज यू एग्जिस्ट यू हैव टू फाइंड डिफरेंट वेज टू सेल इट बिकॉज द ऑडियंस इज चेंजिंग द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिस्टम इज चेंजिंग द वे यू रीच द ऑडियंस इज चेंजिंग आई कैन रीच माई ऑडियंस बाई पासिंग एवरीबडी आई जस्ट हैव टू पुट इट ऑन माई सोशल मीडिया आई हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ पीपल बिकॉज पीपल नॉट जस्ट माई कंज्यूमर्स बट पीपल विद इन माई ऑर्गेनाइजेशन so which is where you know ethics comes to play a very big role yep. if you are an ethical organization your people are happy if your people are happy they don't leave you if they don't leave you you survive longer than others so you take care of profits you take care of people you have to take care of your planet yes in consumer boycott has become a thing yes it's not new back in the 1700s in england there was a boycott for sugar which mm. was being made by slaves and they said boycott it uh, or stop slavery they didn't stop it sales of sugar fell by almost 50% wow. so from that day to today yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it only increased yes so as a as a business person these three are in you don't have a choice you know you have to take care of the three so if you feel the planet is being harmed and your profits are um, going to be uh, are going to suffer you have to take care you have to you have to decide what you want to do otherwise this consumer will reject you because he die is not short of options brands are coming and going at you know an insane speed right now yes and uh, the rules of selling of course are there your product has to be good yes. that's that's the first thing but then you as a company have to be good because what has happened is i as a marketer today thanks to the ai tools can get immense information about my consumer right so i make my i get my data i make my advertising strategy but the reverse is also true the consumer is getting immense amount of information about me yes and if it does not match him if it does not match what he stands for he's going to boycott and this generation alpha has grown up differently you know they have grown up in a world where they've seen this happen yeah. so they will do it at the blink of an eye yeah so so yeah take care of your three p's and take care of your consumers they are watching you and you are watching them so yeah. you know it's it's uh, the game is like that so uh, be no. extremely cautious yeah you have to no, be extreme, you have to be on your toes today the the you know the companies could be started by the greats you know like if i had to start my own company i like when i graduated in 2000 uh, i couldn't even fathom of starting my own company because yes you you didn't have those everybody doesn't have those means to do that right yeah. or our education system our societal norms didn't confirm or said that there are so many sad stories about entrepreneurship and so many good stories about working for somebody else right uh, but today to your point starting a brand starting a company is like a child's play yeah. uh, you know today and many children are doing that <laughs> i was just going to say that like many children have started their own companies right yeah and yes I, i don't know if you know this but there is this uh, famous uh, fidgeting toy right it's called pockets yes, fitbit uh, fit, um, the not just the fitbit but the po- uh, it's called the pockets that, that- uh it's like you press keep, just keep pressing the rubber right it started by a 7 year old in australia yes 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 yes, yes. oh yeah they're saying I that she, uh, they're, they're saying that she doesn't need to work for her life yes uh, yes you know because of royalty she's getting and the mo- money she's made she doesn't even have to work and she's just yes. a 7 year old child yeah. so yeah. i just have a question which is a reverse question now uh, to you we spoken a lot about generation alpha do you think this generation alpha is also heading for a doomsday uh you know that they are experiencing so many things like you know un- unfortunately for us we experience things gradually right like yes. we didn't have a phone we had to uh, use our landline phones uh, to make a call right and if our dad is speaking forget our friends calling and if they you could hear i remember the technology coming in where call waiting we could f- uh, feel it right yes so it was not there in our yes. times right it yes. was introduced yeah. Uh, yes that call waiting facility like tuk 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 used to happen on our phones so yes. we've seen gradually increase but this gradual yeah. increase is not happening for generation alpha right they are yes, like yeah. no. pdp came out of nowhere facebook came out of nowhere yeah. right all of this so 
do you think they are heading for a doomsday in a very different way no no i don't think there is going to be a doomsday actually we really don't know where generation alpha is heading because a lot of them are not even born you know it's yeah. we said 2010 to 2025 but yeah. what i do realize and what i do understand is they are becoming much more aware of uh, things like mental health they mm. are because you know we are talking about it much more they're yeah. more open to it so i guess that should help yes they would be but then you know what is challenging for us is not challenging for them they grew up in that they grew up in this yeah. fast moving train you know for them it's normal so um while we feel it's happening at breakneck speed for them for them they have not known anything otherwise so they learn to handle it they learn to cope with it and i think they would there, there will be no doomsday but there will be a completely different world of tomorrow and um, which would be guided by these kids and uh, the, the, the way they, um, they they look at things they interpret things i think a lot of rules of marketing of branding of life will change yeah. the way we live will change you know yeah. um, that's going to be for sure i guess we are the ones who our generation has to adapt to it uh, as the, the world will change the world will change and i am hoping and i'm very sure for the good um something will come out of this chaos yeah. uh which will be different which will be nice no i heard It'll a stat definitely be different i heard a recent stat that work like people are talking about four days a week nowadays that there are certain yeah. companies who are experimenting with it right yeah but it's going to come with the advent of technology and ai and this generation yeah. alpha like we spoke speak of they are going to not work more than 3 3 and a half days in a week yeah yeah right yes and yes. to your point other things are going to become more important the physical yes. aspect playing physical aspect yes. is going to become important yeah. spending yes. time on personal spiritual mindful mental yes. practices are going to be and it's already important right um, yes you know i was a big non believer of mindfulness or even just doing meditation today i'm a big believer of that right it's it's like my medicine it's like my go to place if i uh, yeah. you know if i'm tired or if i just want to take a break as an example but the point is uh like to your point it's going to be very different now how are you preparing your own son uh or how are you preparing the younger generation who are getting bred under you as a as an educator as a teacher you know how are you preparing them yeah. that they start practicing all these practices which are alien to many yes. of us even spirituality is yeah. in an alien yes. practice in modern age right So how are you enabling that? So so Anis there's a very old parenting style that you know you if your child could listen to everything you told him parenting would be so easy but yeah. children never listen to what you say they only observe and imitate what you do hmm. So I guess um you know just the way you live your life the choices you make the way you speak the 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 things you stand for they they percolate down to your child also and i guess over here not just individual households but it is schools which are going to have to play a very important role in the way they are bringing that because children are spending a lot of their time in schools parents are not at home yeah. you know so the the growth is happening there and i guess what i would genuinely want is a school with a new curriculum which is focusing on different things you know i you know i keep telling uh um, the children around me that it's okay if you don't know the capital of a certain country but if you really know how to how take care matter? of your own capital yeah what does it matter it can really yeah. right knowing capital of some yeah. country which but you... it, what matters is taking care of your own capital if yes. you know wealth and finance i guess that's a more better life skill yes. than uh, you know being able to narrate the capitals of every country in the world so schools have to really change their curriculum i guess there should be classes on nutrition there should be classes on fitness yeah. because eventually you and i know that to keep us going we first need a healthy body and a healthy mind yeah. and that should be taught from the time they are children you know research after research is coming out of how children's bodies and minds are being damaged by incorrect nutrition or incorrect sleeping habits or incorrect consumption of technology i guess that has to change yeah. once you give those are the weapons once the child has those weapons he faces the new world differently yeah. so as individuals that's what we should focus on 
more than anything else because knowledge is changing it's evolving yeah. you know i i cannot teach him or teach her uh, content but i can tell them how to handle things yeah. and that is i guess um the biggest role that you as an adult in the life of a child can play you know tell them the and second thing i keep telling is do not go after winning you know do not go after first second third that should be abolished i mean i sincerely believe there should be no sports days where you're giving first second third is the most demoralizing thing yeah. for so many of the children except yeah. for the three four for parents it becomes a competition yeah you remove this concept of winning every great country from finland to norway everybody they don't believe in giving exams tests ranking their children a lot of schools in india are also not ranking children but yeah. you know what they're going ahead and ranking schools yeah you have you have you have alienated a whole section yes so don't rank schools number them you know th- that is uniformity then yeah. you're making a generation which is genuinely equal which is genuinely mentally strong and confident to handle because the world is going to get scary you know yeah you cannot stop development but you can develop your child differently and i guess that is something that we really i mean that's something i really very passionately believe in and my book win right was also just based on that winning is not about coming first second or third winning is can i work with people in a team winning is yes. collaboration winning is cooperation you know winning is being able to communicate that is winning agreed and that is a life skill we need to give our children if they have to face the future because we don't know what did we know chat gpt would blow up last year No. we didn't know did we know it would change every business model possible we don't know so we don't know this december what's going to blow up yeah. and what's going to be the next big thing but what we know is we need to be as strong mentally here and physically yeah. both of these things the most precious assets that should be taken care of no and i completely agree to you in fact i was talking to a educator uh, i met her earlier this week and uh, she's been in that space for almost two decades and uh, she was saying right now the education industry is in a confused mindset yes. uh you know covid brought out a lot of changes gave birth to a lot of edtech companies which was good because it kind of challenged the status quo and yes. forced many uh traditional or existing education systems to evolve but yes. now post covid it's further confused everybody now because those <laughs> big companies are really not doing well right the yeah. uh, the institutions which have been there there's like okay students are not behaving the way they should be behaving right so yes it's ripe for disruption in many ways like you said yes. uh yes. you know these curriculums need to be relooked seriously yes. right like yes. Yes. i'm not against teaching like you said capitals of the world or uh history lessons and all of that right but what are wh- what can you take something out to bring in these life skills which are yeah. far more important like why do yeah. men do not get taught how to cook food as an yes. example right yeah. it's such an amazing life skill i unfortunately had to learn it the hard way because when i was traveling i had to learn how to cook my own food and i know yeah. how to cook but in our household uh you know my mother ensured that both the girl child and the the boy child learn the same yeah. things which are being taught yeah. but every household is not being yeah. addressed yeah. that way yeah. and like in you fact, said yeah yeah we yeah. spend more time in school than at at home yeah. right yeah. yes so these life skills are far more important to bring in than focus on some stupid thing which doesn't like i don't remember many things what i was taught in school today to be very careful even the school child doesn't remember after the exam is over you ask him he would have forgotten you know they just so they you're teaching them to mug up to cram to go and perform yeah. and in that zeal in that zest in that crazy race to win you will also cheat you will go and take farras which is okay yeah as long as you get that particular rank and you make your parents proud so parents should be very clear what they are proud of yes you know and tell that to the child that certain things don't matter you do it i mean certain kids are good they will do it but you should not be proud of certain things you should yes. be and you should be proud of certain things you know yeah. the child is very tender and um, you have to take them you have to grow them uh, nurture them with a lot of care 
Yeah. And when we hand them over to the schools, you know, we want them to be handled delicately. We want them to be handled nicely. Yeah. We want that child when he says the camel is not the ship of the desert or, you know, to encourage him that, okay, why don't you now find out instead of questioning him, you know, maybe your child was smart. He was yeah. outspoken. He could tackle the teacher. Maybe another child could have just become quiet yeah. and never, ever expressed and we would have lost a genius. Yeah. You know, so it definitely starts very young. And if our consumers are so young, you know, you're giving them the iPad. Yeah. He is consuming technology. He is consuming brands. Take care of him. Yeah. And um, yeah, so yeah, that's where the schools definitely have to step in. This is the time for disruption. This is a time for innovation, a new model. And I'm sure a lot of parents would be very, very excited if they got an option like that. Yeah, just an idea which came to my mind for a lot of companies who are thinking about UX, UI. Take that iPad and give it to children and let them play with it and tell them how good your UX, UI is, right? Like as an example. Oh, Please, yes. Oh, yes. Building a product or building a website also. Let oh, them yes. play with it and they'll tell you how bad it is, right? If, if a oh, child yes. cannot play with it, then you're oh, lost yes. the entire oh, plot. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, you know, this is where another thought came in my mind. The whole concept of games, you know, yes. when we were children, video games were looked down upon. Yeah. Comics were looked down upon. Yes. Like, those are the most powerful tools of learning. Yeah. So if you are a new brand, make a game and give it to a child, you probably have your first customer, yeah. you know, hooked on to you. So, so yeah, it's changing. It's evolving. I mean, uh, even for us, the it's interesting to see that there are so many options available. Yeah. And we use those options to bring out the best. Pralat Kakkar has been on the show. and uh, Oh, wow. Our, one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, he's been the genius in, in Indian advertisement space, right? Absolutely. He's like the guru of that. Oh. And I asked him this question, like, where did he get these crazy ideas from? Like, and some of the ads and things he's done is path-breaking, right? Change the face oh, yeah. of India. He said, as a child, he used to read mad magazines. If you've wow. read mad comics and mad magazines, right? Oh, yes. They were looked up, down upon because those magazines yes. are really... You hide them in between your books and read Oh, yes. Them. Oh, yes. As, as a child, I, when I used to read, I would be hiding it from my parents because some of them were like scary shit, right? Pardon my yes. French. But yes. they were... Like he said, I used to get... I, I've read those books and I... And I I today try to find them to give it to my child. Like, read. This is crazy stuff, right? You don't get this. Like, I bought... Tintin and Asterix and Oblix entire series and I gift it to my children like read this because oh, yeah. they're fun. They're, I know they can be derogatory because racism, uh, male shamanism was there but we didn't even look them out. Now those topics have become more prominent but yeah. uh, but those comics taught many of us many different things like and Prahlad Kakar said that I got my inspiration from Mad Comic. I was like really? Yeah like some of the stories he said is fun right it's interesting. Yeah. So I yeah. mean none of us got I mean, they would not say I got an inspiration from this history class of mine or this algebra class of mine <laughs> those I, I, I don't know how many stories we hear of that but yes when you were allowed to grow free yeah. to chase your creativity in whichever field and yeah. whichever way you know, you learned. Somebody learns outdoors. Somebody learns through books. Somebody learns through cinema. Yeah. Watching cinema was a huge deal for us. Yes. You know, you were not allowed. It was, you know, you, you'll you get spoiled. You'll get yeah. bad ideas. My son lives and breathes cinema. And he says the most important lessons I've learned is cinema, is from cinema. Yeah. So, yes, you know, I guess um, we are now learning. Uh, more about the you know the way we grow, the way creativity takes place, the yeah. way the human brain functions, and we must give back this knowledge to our children with a better curriculum, a better environment in the house. Uh, I guess that's learning. You know, just let them be free, and yeah. you have no idea how much they can learn. As you said, just give them the iPad, and you know you will have all your data, you have all your analysis in a few minutes, in a few yeah. hours. No, it's a uh, learning as a medium has evolved. It's no longer just an institution like a school or a college which you have to go to. There are so yeah. many platforms and parents and educators have to think about widening those learning methodologies or parameters. As grown-ups also, you and I have expanded our learning mediums. Like, Ooh. to your Ooh. point, uh, I play games. Okay, I'll, I'll say it openly here. I play PUBG on weekends with my friend, uh, with my child. 
right? And through that, I've been able to teach him how to uh, listen, how to collaborate, how to play that strategy and, you know, how to work as a team, all of the, now you can't teach that to a child, right? If I do a classroom session, he will hate me no. for it. Those are boring yeah. topics, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you can do it through a medium of a game, why not, right? So yeah. I do that uh, often. No, Rajita, this has been a very wonderful conversation. I expected <laughs> it. And as I said, when we started before recording that you and I are meeting for a coffee and we're just chit-chatting and it almost felt like that. And I didn't know yes, how the it time. Did. And I can continue and I can go on this <laughs> conversation, but I know how busy you are and taking time out from your busy schedule. Uh, I really appreciate that. But it, this has been really wonderful and I hope the audience uh, also gain a lot of information and I'll leave those uh, in my show notes, the books which you've written so that people can... Uh, read through them or buy them and, you know, gain a lot of knowledge which you have and you put that down on your books. Thank you, Anish. It was actually a delight talking to you. I almost forgot that, you know, this is the first time we are meeting yeah. uh, because I shared so many things so spontaneously and um, uh, willingly with you. So it was a delight being on your show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, really enjoyed myself. It's, a, it's been an absolute pleasure and love to see uh, your art gallery soon coming out with your paintings. Uh, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yes. So best of luck with that. And uh, if see if we can order your cakes too. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yes. Uh, very soon we would be out with something. But the art is, of course, uh, taking off. It's doing well. It's something I'm enjoying. And uh, uh, let's see where it takes me. Definitely. Best of luck with that. And thank you for your time. Thank you.